Uniprot. The quick version. Seriously, this time. Okay, so Uniprot is this database of proteins that you can use to find out information about proteins. And so yesterday I did a long version with all the different things that Uniprot could show you and there's so much different things, but basically I want to just do a really quick version of why you might use Uniprot. Okay, so say there's a protein you want to, you're interested in. Um, so I'm going to use the same example I did yesterday, human egg 2 you don't need to know what it does, but it's this RNA interference protein I studied in grad school and you can learn way more about it on my blog and everything. Okay, so what you'll see if you search for a protein is a few things. Um, so the entry, this is going to be the stable identifier. This is session code. This is going to be what you're going to be using to search for this protein in other databases as well. Then you have the entry name. This is going to be two parts. Um, it'll have like a gene name or a protein name um, and then underscore and then the species. Um, so these are all human, so they're going to be human. You can also search for other organisms as well um, and you will see that they'll have a different species code. Um, so you'll see like mouse, et cetera, et cetera. But we want to go back and we want to look at this um, ego two. A couple of things when you first look at it, you'll see gene names. This will include names that it most often goes by, as well as like some of its aliases, maybe something it went by before. Um, and so this can be really helpful and it also be able to find it if it is now going by a different name than what you search for. Um, you can also quickly see the length in terms of amino acids. Um, at least of the canonical isoforms, so proteins can have different versions. Uniprot will tell you about those different versions, and they'll typically be one that's going to be the canonical version. Um, and this is what's typically used um, in all sorts of different software. Okay, this is, you can see here that this has a gold. Um, this means that it's been reviewed, it's been, it's been part of this like Swiss prot half of, or I guess it's less than half of probably, um, the Swiss prot part of Uniprot. Um, so Uniprot has both um, like the Swiss part, prot part and this tremble part. So this has been, the Swiss pro, or prot, I don't know, has been um, thoroughly reviewed and really well curated. So people have looked over it and really made sure everything's uh, um, good to go. Um, the unreviewed stuff, there's a lot of data out there that there's just not time to review it all. And so this stuff hasn't been reviewed, um, but it is still data and um, that can be useful. Uh, but so this one's gold, which means that it's been reviewed and it's probably also going to be better annotated. So you can see here, it's got an annotation score of five over five. Annotation just refers to when people go through and they assign different functions and data and um, all sorts of evidence for various parts do this and this and this and this. Lots of different types of annotation that you can have. And so you can see there's all this information that goes along with this protein name um, with this accession code um, and this all of this annotation has been assigned to it and you can also see the sources the publications and everything so this is giving a high annotation score um, in the uniprot entry you can find all sorts of different things about its function about its shape um, its structure it's um, go annotation so this is another type of annotation that's used to um, assign different func functions and molecular locations to it. Again, you can see there's just tons and tons of databases where you can go if you want to find out even more about where it's located in cells, some mutations that are associated with diseases, um, features. So it'll tell you about um, experimentally when so with mutagenesis. So they like the researchers will make changes to the protein and then see what happens. And here it'll tell you, okay, if you make a change here, it will have this effect or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this is for the things that have been tested in the lab, um, as well as variants that have been found to be naturally occurring and whether or not there's evidence that they cause disease, are likely to cause disease, et cetera. Um, there's also information on post-translational modifications. So things like phosphorylation, glycosylation, so adding sugars and phosphate groups, and you can get all sorts of more information about this and links to databases that will tell you more. Um, so there's all sorts of other databases. So Uniprot's kind of like this launch pad that you can use to find um, more information. If you want to know more about its expression, it'll take you to like the expression atlas. 
um, things that it interacts with. And again, with each of these, then you can go and search for them um, in these other databases that it'll link you to. It'll also show you the structure, whether or not there are actual known solved structures. Um, and this is a word of caution, I went into more yesterday, but often what they'll be showing you is not the full protein or it, maybe it's even like multiple copies of the protein. Basically, I'm not sure how it defaults. I think it's just like the first one or the earliest one in the alphabet in terms of how these are listed and which one it gets like shown on the screen. But basically, um, a lot of times these structures are solved with things like um, extra crystallography or NMR or cryo-EM. Um, and so with the, especially with the NMR and with the with the extra crystallography and the um, a lot of times, especially in the earlier structures, there'll only be parts of a protein, so a domain of a protein, say. Um, and so this is just a little bit of a little part of Argonaut. Um, and actually, if you were to look at the full length structures, this is um, the structure that was solved in by Elado Kayim and the Joshua Lemar Joshua Tours lab where I did my PhD. Um, and so basically here's the full length protein and you can see that before we were only looking at a single part of it. And we can see that because we were only um, showing that it was in like positions 439 to 575 rather than the whole 1 to 859. Um, you also have links here where you can take you to the PDB to look and um, explore the sequence of the structure in more detail. So it'll show you all the different structures that have been solved um, that were all associated with the secession code. And so having a secession code makes it so that all these other other things, other things that are known about this protein can be mapped back to knowing this same um, single accession code. Um, if a protein does not have a structure that's been solved, um, or even if it does, there'll be an alpha fold prediction. Um, and it's important to note that regions, it'll tell you about regions of the comp that are highly confident as well as less confident. And you'll see that these regions that are um, there's some regions that are very low confidence, and these are also going to be regions that are probably not visible in the structures. So even though the structures were the things that like those loops and stuff were present in this protein when it got um, it's like picture taken, um, not really picture taken, but um, the way that it works is that if the regions are really flexible, they're going to be like kind of like you can think of them as kind of like washing each other out like a blurry picture. Um, and so you're not going to be able to see them. And so you don't see them here, but you will see them in the alpha fold prediction, um, but likely with lower confidence. Uh, based on that protein, then um, the structures of the protein, they can assign or um, different read, like different describe it, like which regions are helices, which are loops, which are sheets, um, strands, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, it also gives you information about the um, relatives of this protein, as well as different domains, so different regions of the protein that have some sort of function or some sort of um, fold that is also found in other proteins um, or that has specific functions. And so you can look and find more information about all these domains as well. Um, Phylogenomics, so what's it related to? Who's its friends? Who's its families? There's this thing called like Interpro as well as like PFAM. These are really good, SUPFAM um, as well. And then for like gene tree, if you want to know like where does it, like it evolutionarily sits, um, a bunch of really great resources here. Again, they're all going to be linked directly to it from this Uniprot entry. As I mentioned briefly before, there can be different versions of proteins. We call these isoforms um, and so, Basically, these can come from a variety of different ways. They can be processed before they're made. Um, they can be made differently, or they could be like processed after. Um, but you can end up with these different versions of the same protein, um, such as for here, there's two isoforms that are produced by alternative splicing. So different processing when they were making the mRNA um, that leads one to be longer than the other. So you can see that the second sequence differs from the canonical and that it's missing this part. Um, and so you can also see the sequence of this as well. And you can see that the length here is 825 as, instead of 859. It's also going to tell you the mass in Daltons. Um, when we talk about proteins, we often talk about kilodaltons. So a kilodalton is 1,000 Daltons. So this is 97,000 Daltons. So it's about 97 kilodaltons. Um, and then That'll be useful if you're trying to do other stuff or see where your band should be on a gel, et cetera, if you are studying this protein. 
Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so beware of the different isoforms. Um, so one will be designated the canonical. Um, that's not necessarily the one that you want. It's often the one that you want, and it's often the one that's mostly often the one that people are talking about when they're referring to this protein. Um, but do be aware of the differences between isoforms, especially when you're looking at the sequencing um, at the at the nucleic acid level. Um, they can also have like computationally like predicted isoforms that ha don't have like the um, the strong evidence. Um, and so yes, they caution you too that sometimes in the sequencing data, there can be issues with the sequencing data that make it so that it's not um, the it's not what you would expect. Um, let's say. Also show you like regions where there have been found to be sequencing differences. Um, and then the sequences themselves. So if you want to look at like the RefSeq, this is going to be like the reference um, version of the of the sequence. Um, so the one that's been designated as like, this is the one that everyone's referring to unless you say otherwise. Um, the CCDS will take you to the coding DNA. Um, this is what we looked at yesterday. Um, this is the consensus DNA sequence. So basically, it's been well reviewed. And you can see here, there's these different exons that have been spliced together, indicated by the black and blue, um, as well as the translated form of the protein. Um, so this is like you're looking at the cDNA. Um, so this is the processed, um, the DNA version of the processed messenger RNA. And you can see that here, if you were to like click on the start codon, you see, oh, that's the methionine. Um, so I like how you can see, look and see where things correspond in either way. And this can be really helpful if you're doing some sort of recombinant protein expression and you're trying to figure out, okay, if I want to, what, where should I cut the sequence in order to get just the part that I want? And then you can also be looking at the uniprot to see, okay, well, where are the different domain margins? Um, you can get more information about where it's located in the genome. RNA sequencing um, and then similar proteins. So the Argonaut has some really similar um, proteins. So you can see it's like 100% identical to chimpanzee Argonaut. And then if you go down into slower identity, you get things like um, other types of monkeys, horse, baboons, um, rabbits. And you can see that some of these have the gold standard. They've been really well annotated and reviewed, whereas others um, are less um, verified and they probably have less of the annotation information alongside it. But you can see this one has a really nice annotation, lots and lots of information, lots of links to other sources where you can find more information. And again, you can, or you can access all of these too just directly from the site. Um, and then you can use this a session number, this number here, in order to, or the um, entry name, in order to get more information about it in different servers. Um, one of my favorite servers is Uniprop Prop Param, or Xpazy Prop Param, sorry. You can type in that, um, the name or the accession code into Xpazy Prop Param, and what it's going to do is it's going to tell you various things about the protein. Um, you can actually link to it directly from here. Um, but I will just show you going from the prop param website. If I um, put in the accession number, um, then I can compute the parameters. It's going to tell me various things about the protein. I'm just going to choose the whole protein here. I could have just chosen the region of it if I wanted. And then it's going to tell me about how long it is and how big it is. We already saw that. Um, the isoelectric point, this will tell us about the charge. Um, at various pH, the amino acid composition, um, the atomic composition, I don't know when this would be useful, but you can see that this chemical formula is pretty wild, um, and extinction coefficients. These are going to be useful for when you're trying to figure out a concentration of a protein um, based on its UV absorbance. Um, and so it'll give you the extinction coefficients under oxidizing conditions. So when is this one that shows you like assuming that the cis form cysteines. So this means like the cysteine, resi the cysteine residues are like linked together in these disulfide bonds, or more typical um, would be this under reducing condition. So assuming all cis residues are reduced, and this is the one that you're normally going to use. Uh, here's the extinction coefficient you can stick into Beer's law, as well as it's telling you that the absorption 0.1%. So if you get an absorption at 0.607, that's going to be a concentration of one grams per liter. 
One more really useful thing about Unifraught is it allows you to align sequences. Um, so if you add Simps when you're on an entry, if you add it to your basket, um, now you have a basket up here where you have different sequences. And so say that I wanted to go to similar proteins, maybe I wanted to compare it to um, the horse Argonaut. So I could go to the horse Argonaut, I could add this to my basket. Now I can go to my basket, select these, and align them. Um, depending on how long how long the sequences are and everything, um, how many sequences you have, it could take a while or it could be really fast. Um, you can also paste in samples. Um, then it will align and it will show you um, the alignment. And so this one was pretty fast. And if we want to look at it, we can now go to completed. And you can see the sequence, and you can see it's pretty, 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 very, very much um, I, close. And yeah, um, you can highlight various properties, um, similarity, um, features, um, structure, all sorts of different things. So really cool stuff, as well as you can do like phylogenetic trees, percent identity. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of really great things in this Unipod is using like this like cluster omega tool. Um, basically there's really cool stuff that you can do um, with alignment and all starting at Unipod. Okay, so that was the quick version. Um, and so hope that it was helpful. And if you want more details, then watch the long version, which was like a half an hour long, which I posted yesterday. Okay, have fun. <laughs>